I was cut from the high school basketball team my freshman year. I didn't make varsity until my junior year of high school. I sat the bench my entire college career. And I managed to make my overseas professional basketball career still happen. And today I'm going to show you how I received overseas basketball looks without any college offers. What's going on everyone? It's your boy Dez360 tuning in, providing you with that motivational and inspirational content to help supercharge your grind, your vibe, your journey. Okay, so today we are gonna talk about five keys to getting overseas looks for all my people that wanna play overseas basketball without any college offers needed. I said it today, I received no Division I, no Division II scholarships when I was on my basketball grind, when I was trying to live out my dream. Yet I didn't give up and I still managed to play professionally and overseas in not one, but two countries. I played in the Philippines, I played in Mexico. You can check out my other videos that pretty much tell my whole journey. So today I'm gonna list five keys on what it takes to get overseas looks without college offers. Let's get right into it guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, Des360, let's go. So the first key to getting overseas looks pretty much without any college offers is, uh, it's something that we should all be doing as hoopers, staying in the gym. The reason why I really emphasize this is if you want to play at the next level, you never know when that opportunity is gonna come. So you always have to be ready. If you're a gym rat, I was a gym rat. You know, I started playing basketball late. Age 14 is when I really said, hey, I wanna play basketball. So I knew that I had to live in the gym, right? Especially if you're not getting heavily recruited, if you don't have any offers on the table, you need to just keep working on your game. You gotta work on your craft and master your craft. There are so many things you can learn. You know, there is no, oh, I've, I've done enough work today. No, that, or at least I didn't grow up that way. So I'm gonna tell you guys what I did. That's why that's a huge key, staying in the gym. Number one, what does it do? It keeps you focused. It keeps you, you know, knowing that you're putting in work and uh, reminds you that someone else is out there putting in just as much work as you are, right? So you wanna stay in the gym. You wanna build that confidence and you want to work on your weaknesses. Right? I knew that I had to work on my left hand. I had to work on jump stopping. I had to work on my form, weight room, X, Y, Z, so many things. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys this, and I'll be putting out a program in the future called Train Like a Pro, because when I was on this grind and I had this vision of, you know what, I wanna be an overseas basketball player, I was putting in easily six hours uh, a day in the gym. I had one rest day a week. That was usually Wednesday. So Monday, Tuesday, going hard. Um, started off by, by waking up super early, getting like a beach run in, getting in the sand, resistance, and then I'll follow that up, get in the weight room. Then I will take a little break or get lunch and then I'll get back out there on the court, work on skills, free throws, shots, ball handling, X, Y, Z, and then take a break, eat, recover, maybe even go home, watch some basketball, study the game, then come back out and get some pickup, you know, try to play, work on specifics in my game. So we'll get way more into that. If you check out my website, www.des-360.com, sign up because I'm gonna be putting out exactly what I did, my program, Train Like a Pro. And yeah, if you're a hooper, that's nothing. That's what you do. You're running, you're getting right, you're staying conditioned, you're working on your weaknesses. So number one key is stay in the gym. By staying in the gym, you'll start to see who isn't in the gym. And you'll build that confidence and know like, this is why things are gonna happen for me. Remember what you're doing isn't just the present. You're working hard in the present, giving everything in the present for something even larger in the future. The next key on how to get overseas looks without any college offers is simple. It's finding competition. You have to level up because you maybe didn't play college or didn't get a lot of playing time. I, I didn't get a lot of playing time in college. So I had to find ways to get that experience, to get that run, to work on my game and not just against anybody. Not just, oh, I'm gonna go pull up and play pickup against guys I know I can destroy. I was looking for overseas players, people that were already playing overseas, any pros that were training. If it's summertime, there are a lot of pros that for me came to LA. Um, so I would try to find them and train with them, watch them, play with them, of course, five on five. <laughs> Nope, nope. Ooh, 
any retired pros, try to play with them, and or any college players um, around the neighborhood that are up and coming or D1, whatever it is. You have to find high level competition because that's gonna challenge you to raise your game up. When you go overseas, <laughs> you're in for a rude awakening if you think that there aren't people that are talented, taller than you, skilled, fast, dean up full court, everything is there. When I went to the Philippines, that was the first thing I noticed. I'm like, oh my gosh, these guys get after it. You know, this I'm playing against like a five foot seven guard, but he's Ding up every possession. He's getting after, he's playing hard. He's hitting me with extra elbows. And I love that, you know, and I was prepared because I was playing against division one or pro guards in the States and then going out there. Same thing in Mexico. So you gotta find that high level competition. It's out there, it's available. Hey, if you're in the LA area, you can hit me up and we can run it. All right, so this next step is very important. All the steps that I'm basically explaining to you and we're talking about, I cover more so in depth in my online program on my website, www.des-360.com. And literally that's over an hour where I'm outlining every single thing I did to get recruited. But this is that free content. We're gonna still talk about the importance of filming. If you want overseas looks and you don't have any college offers, you need to film your journey. That means any film that you have of like your games in the past, right? So I had, I didn't have that much college footage, um, but I had some high school footage. Um, I had pro-am footage. So in the summers I would play in like pro-am leagues. Um, I would record that, uh, even scrimmages. I would go to open gym at colleges and I'll record that. You, you want footage because that is, if, you re if you're reaching out to teams or a team is interested in you and you don't even have footage for them, it just makes it a little bit harder for them to decipher who to pick or who you are. So you wanna film that journey. Um, even if you're working out super hard, film that and just make sure what when you are filming workouts, it's not just some basic half speed stuff. Um, I actually have the exact video that I used uh, and it's a workout video that I used uh, to get recruited by Mexico and Philippines and get those looks. And that's also in my extensive online program. So, but that's the key, film your journey. Overseas basketball. Living in another country and playing the game you love. This is a huge milestone for any ambitious basketball player. But where do you start and how do you get your first contract? My name is Des360 and this is how to play basketball overseas. I'm going to share with you exactly what I did to go from college bench warmer to overseas pro basketball player. Watch my full course now, only at des360.com. The next step to getting overseas looks without any college offers is researching and networking. Now this is very, very, very important. They all are important. Everything I list is important here because it's all part of the formula to getting you those looks. You want to build your own network because maybe you haven't played a lot so people haven't been able to see your abilities, right? I knew I was good. I was like, man, I'm really, I'm a really good player, just as good as any starter, any other player, but they don't see that. People haven't seen me. So what I had to do is go out there and network and reach out to whether it's an agent, a ball club, um, people that, other overseas players, people that I aspire to um, replicate and, and get out there and, and follow their footsteps, you know, or just to get my opportunity there. So you're gonna have to take some risks. You may have to drive an hour. I remember doing stuff like this. I would drive an hour, sometimes two hours, to an open gym to meet a coach, play with a certain team, um, to meet an overseas player, right? To run fives, because you really wanna build a network. You don't know who it is. When I got my look from Mexico, I was training and there was another player who played in Mexico, but I was ready for the opportunity. So it was just like a easy plug and play and boom. So networking and then online, now we have social media. You guys hit me up, that's, that's good. You know, I'm a resource for you and you also want to just kind of build that ecosystem. Um, at the same time, keep, keep eye on your social media posts up here and there. I, like I said, my program, I really go deeper into it. This is just the, the abridged YouTube version for you guys. So next step and the final key is find ways to produce. It all comes down to that. You gotta produce. 
I know people that are workout wonders and then Showtime comes and Showtime means like, we'll go actually to a tryout or a, an open run and all of a sudden they're like a different player. They're not knocking down shots. They're playing timid. They're not that same beast that they were during the workout. And as I mentioned, you need to have so many pieces of your game ready to go. This is a competitive realm. You're entering the world of business, basketball as a business. Really, that's what it is now. So you have to be able to produce because what if you do get that look? What if a team reaches out to you and says, hey, come fly out. We want you to play with our players or, or we have a, a scout that's gonna come watch your open run or whatever it is, or this tryout. Um, they have overseas tryouts, right? That are in the States and these pro camps. You gotta be able to destroy, destroy. And destroy doesn't mean averaging 50, even though if you're dropping 50, you are gonna get scouted. I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you what's not gonna work in another video. But um, what if you're getting in the paint every time and you're making good passes every time and that's being filmed. So you really have to produce. You really can't have any off nights because when you go play overseas, you can literally drop 40 points. And if you lose, you can lose your job too. Honestly, I've been in that scenario. I killed and, and we ended up losing and it was like, oh, you're on the trading block. You might get traded. They might get traded down the street, down to the next team. So that's it, guys. Those are the keys to getting recruited. Uh, those are the keys to getting overseas looks without any college offers. It really comes down to you, your passion, right? Because initially and really the people that follow these steps, the people that go the extra mile, if you check my course, my program, I have a checklist that has so many things that you should be doing. And if you do all those things and then you go back to someone and say, hey, I did it all. Um, hey, I'm going the extra mile. It stands out and that's how you separate yourself. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I wanna hear from you. If you have any questions, reach out. I am your resource. Let's get you recruited. Let's get you playing basketball overseas. I can put in my work, but you gotta put in your work too. Des360, see you later. Thank you, peace.